While on-screen male rivalries are often created by epic battles, when it comes to female rivalry, there's a certain trope that's far more common. That of fights for affection and boy stealing best friends, of catty quips and the other woman. Female rivalries centered around fighting over a guy. The most self-centered, idiotic person I have ever f***ing met. And although the most famous rivalries remain things like Anakin versus Obi-Wan, Batman versus the Joker, or me versus the YouTube algorithm, these types of female rivalries are often some of the most prevalent out there. Not exactly one-on-one -on -one rivalry, but love triangles. First off, I'm obviously not opposed to the concept of love triangles or female rivalry overall. If I was, it would be counterintuitive for me to have a feud with YouTube's CEO. Susan, if you're watching this, I'll stop slandering you if you start promoting my videos more. Rather, I want to look at how these are portrayed, and how they could be portrayed better. This trope isn't unique to recent years. It stretches across decades, if not centuries, of literature, movies, music, and more. Nor is it unique to women. There are obviously tons of films about men fighting over one woman. May the best man win. But the fact that it's existed for a long time doesn't make it good, and the fact that there's a male equivalent doesn't negate the fact that this trope offers a unique insight into and portrayal of internalized misogyny. In case you're not familiar, the concept of a love triangle is pretty simple. Three people, with two of them attracted to the remaining person. Think Twilight, Wuthering Heights, The Hunger Games, Mean Girls. Often media meant for teens. Today, I'm going to be talking mostly about love triangles with two women and one man, because that's where sexism often comes into play. When women in film are faced with competition over a man, the first reaction is usually to villainize her. Whether it's an actual case of cheating or just rivalry, women are often placed at odds because of a guy. You dumb f***ing bitch! Specifically, this often intersects with the trope that I talk about in, like, every video, not like other girls. Hello, Refro. You, you are not like other girls. When films plays a one woman in an antagonist role, the main character often shames her and tries to point out how different they are. She does get your humor like I do. Especially when one woman is the protagonist, the competing other character is framed as basic, stupid, and shallow, and there's an unnecessary animosity towards this other woman. Excuse me? Yeah? I don't have all day. Friendships are often destroyed or avoided just for the sake of the attention of a guy. And obviously, it's pretty common to see a romantic rival negatively. What's notable here, though, is that these are rarely genuine criticisms of the other woman, but criticisms rooted in misogyny. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. Take, for example, Valencia from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. The show is about Rachel Bloom, a woman who moves from West Covina, California in search of her ex-boyfriend Josh. She discovers that Josh isn't single, though. This is Valencia, my girlfriend. The contrast between the two is immediately obvious. Valencia is gorgeous, athletic, and superficial. I don't trust you as far as I can throw you, which is not far because you eat bagels after 8 p.m. While Rachel isn't quite as striking or stereotypically feminine, but is witty and well-educated. These are often the tropes pitted against each other, a lovable main character and a vapid, cruel competitor. From Gilmore Girls' supposedly unintelligent Shane... I've been eating like a pig, I feel all bloaty. Bloaty is not a word. ...to Bridget Jones' unpleasant Natasha, the other choice is often a brainless beauty who is ultra-feminine, unlike the main character, who is different. It's fascinating. Well, for you, how ice is made is probably fascinating. And if the competitor isn't a girly, airhead stereotype, she's often just straight-up insane. In Jane Eyre, there are a few instances of Bertha, the love interest's wife, being super insane or violent, but that doesn't stop Jane, the main character, nor Mr. Rochester, the love interest, from describing her as a hysterical madwoman. What does this mean? It means Charlotte Bronte is cancelled. Twitter, you know what to do. In all seriousness, Jane Eyre is an example of a long-standing stereotype of the other woman being insane. On that note, let's talk more specifically about the other woman. Dynamics that are technically love triangles, but more specifically, involve cheating. He's got a wife, okay? He's married. And you don't think you can take her? First disclaimer, there's obviously no need to create some false dichotomy here. Just because the unnecessary blame on women is rooted in misogyny doesn't mean that the other woman isn't a bad person. Characters like Alex from Fatal Attraction may be ultra-villainized, but sometimes that's just because they are a villain. That said, both in film and in real life, in cases of cheating, the other woman is almost always blamed more than the man, and rarely do we see any in-depth criticisms of the guy. How long have you been married? Nine years. Do you have any kids? Mm-hmm. Got a six-year-old girl. So what are you doing here? 
Usually, even if she's not aware she's making the man cheat, the other woman is framed as an evil seductress. It goes without saying that many of these films aren't entirely realistic. I mean, when given the choice between Scarlett Johansson and anyone else, for any real-life person the answer is immediately obvious. These films do, however, demonstrate a very real phenomenon. Like most tropes, the love triangle isn't entirely based in fiction. In real life, we constantly see the commercialization of alleged rivalries between women and the perpetuation of the philosophy that women can't be friends because they're always fighting over guys. Women in the public eye are constantly pitted against each other, especially when it comes to men. Take, for example, the numerous headlines about Kim Kardashian and Julia Fox. Sorry, I mentioned Julia Fox, so I am legally obligated to play this clip. I mean, I was Josh Safdie's muse when he wrote Uncut Jazz. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, things like right. that. Anyway, because of their involvement with Kanye West, both these women were pitted against each other. Headlines read, Has Julia Fox been copying Kim Kardashian? Kim Kardashian and Julia Fox attend same Oscars after party. And, my personal favorite, Julia Fox just liked Kim Kardashian's latest Instagram post. By the way, in Style Magazine, I'm still waiting for the article about me liking Kim Kardashian's latest Instagram post. And even to this day, there are articles comparing Angelina Jolie and Jennifer Aniston, just because of their quote-unquote love triangle with Brad Pitt a decade ago. All the women I've mentioned are talented and interesting. Most of the women I've mentioned are talented and interesting, but their media presence has often been shaped by their relationships with men. They've branded Julia a gold digger, and they're saying if it wasn't for her romance with Kanye, no one would even know her name. The phenomenon of blaming the other woman also continues in real life, with studies showing that most are more likely to blame the other woman in an affair than the cheating husband. Circling back to real-life celebrities, anyone who ever went shopping in the early 2000s probably saw these types of magazines for sale, portraying Angelina Jolie as an evil temptress who stole the helpless Brad Pitt away from Jennifer Aniston. Numerous online articles analyzed Jolie's seduction tactics when really, sometimes people just remarry. However, some portrayals have begun to look at love triangles, female rivalries, and even cheating with more nuance. This means empathizing with the other woman. And representing how these characters usually aren't evil, but more than anything, just lonely. Aren't you afraid people are gonna look down on you? At least I'm alive or just showing more nuanced rivalries, where women still fight because that's a pretty normal thing, but without all the misogyny. You must hate me so much right now. I don't hate you at all. Or even better, films where the women being cheated on team up to give the guy at fault his comeuppance, recognizing that the other woman is often unfairly blamed way more than the man. How can you be so amazing you could be friends with your husband's mistress? In The Other Woman, three women all cheated on by the same guy are surprised to find they actually enjoy spending time around each other and work together to take down the cheating guy. Any of these subversions of this trope, from befriending the other woman to actually dating her, like with Legend of Korra's Asami and Korra, are far better than using sexist stereotypes to bring each other down. Even the mere recognition of the inclination towards this type of rivalry is a step in the right direction. In her debut album Sour, Olivia Rodrigo challenges these stereotypes by directing her anger at the guy instead of at her female rival. And now I'm picking her apart. I couldn't hurt And the good news about Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is that Valencia doesn't remain one-dimensional. Her and the main character become friends, and she develops past a stereotype of a hot, stupid rival. I've had the best time hanging out with the both of you. Like, I think it's official that we're a squad. From movies to music, media is finally beginning to take more nuanced looks at female rivalry and love triangles. The next step is to take a more nuanced look at love triangles with two men, by which I mean creating love triangles where the options aren't just dark-haired tough man and possibly light-haired nice man but I know that's a lot to ask for. It's a friendship that doesn't need to involve Archie. Mm -hmm. These girls love each other and are best friends outside of Archie. Thanks for watching. There's been a lot of new people on my channel recently, so welcome everyone, and please subscribe if you enjoyed. I just hit 3,000 subscribers, so a huge thank you for that as well, and see you next time.